the James Webb Space Telescope gave scientists a chance to get updated characteristics regarding the universe and finally understand what shape and size it really is. However, the new information sent by the Webb didn't only surprise astronomers, it threw them into utter panic. One of the latest discoveries, simply put, destroys all conventional long-standing theories. And it's not just some abstract scientific problem, it's something that directly affects the future of our galaxy and even Earth. So, what exactly makes the true nature of the universe dangerous to humanity? Why did the telescope's discovery make astronomers so nervous? The thing is, for the last century, they've been desperately trying to figure out the exact value of the Hubble constant. This unit of measurement shows the direct correlation between the distance to a certain celestial body outside our galaxy and its recessional velocity. Put another way, this parameter tells us how fast the universe is expanding and enables scientists to determine its size and probably probably even its shape. Around a hundred years ago, Edwin Hubble, the author of this formula, came up with an initial estimate of 500 kilometers per second per megaparsec. This meant that our universe is expanding at a truly breakneck speed. Imagine that you want to decorate your cake with whipped cream and start joyfully spraying it, only to see the fluffy white mass flood your whole city one second later. Of course, scientists started double-checking Hubble's conclusions. At first, to calculate this parameter, they studied the cosmic microwave background, or in other words, the residual radiation that appeared about 400,000 years after the Big Bang. The blue areas on the map represent regions with a bit lower temperature, and that's exactly where the first stars and galaxies were formed under the influence of gravity. All that astronomers needed to do was to compare this picture with the space we observe today and voila, you have the expansion rate. As a result, studying the cosmic microwave background revealed that the Hubble constant must be around 67 kilometers per second per megaparsec, seven times less than the number received after the original calculation. Roughly speaking, in this case, the whipped cream would fill up only your kitchen. But instead of celebrating the good news, scientists decided to check everything once again using a Another method. This time, they measured how fast galaxies are drifting away from us right at this moment. For this purpose, they used a tool called standard candles, astronomical objects with known luminosity. For instance, Cepheid variables, unusual red giants, or a special type of supernova. If astronomers find out the actual brightness of such celestial bodies and compare them to the apparent brightness visible through a telescope, they can accurately determine the distance between them and the Earth. Just like the brightness of headlights lets us instantly know if a moving car is far or close. With a small margin of error, this standard candle approach showed that the Hubble constant must be around 73 kilometers per second per megaparsec. However, even if we forget about the first and clearly incorrect values suggested by Hubble, what do we do with the more than 10% gap between the results received with the help of these two very reliable methods? This inconsistency has caused a serious crisis in cosmology. We're either absolutely clueless about how our universe evolved, or all our observations and years of research belong in the garbage bin. Neither option is terribly pleasant. But scientists would find it easier to admit they were completely wrong about standard candles. That's like an urgent need to rewire a big mansion troublesome, but anyway, better than having to demolish it completely. However, this is precisely what Webb's latest data has done. First of all, astronomers had expected that the most distant and thus the most ancient galaxies would look extremely primitive. But later, while studying one of the first images taken by Webb, they found some really old galaxies of bizarre shapes. And in just one year of operation, the telescope spotted four times more objects of this kind than we'd ever seen in the entire history 
of cosmic observation. And as if undermining the basis of cosmology itself wasn't enough, in one of the faraway galaxies, Webb accidentally captured Cepheid variables. If the Hubble Space Telescope hadn't made a mistake before that, it's high time to learn the truth. It turns out that the Webb's new findings were almost entirely in line with the previous observations. This means that calculations of the Hubble constant made with the help of standard candles were accurate after all. Well, the problem lies in the measurement of the cosmic microwave background. So that means say goodbye to all of our theories about the universe's evolution. But could it be that the main reason behind this mess isn't scientific conclusions, but the simple fact that our universe is inexplicably strange, much, much stranger than we previously thought? We could justify the discrepancies by saying that space is truly infinite, so any attempts to determine its size or shape are pointless. So why don't we just say this and accept this reality? Because apart from making us feel terrifically ignorant, such a configuration of the universe will eventually rip us into tiny shreds. So what exactly makes infinite space so dangerous? The first such model was described by mathematician Alexander Friedman in 1922, but it found no response in the scientific environment at that time. That's because infinity is a purely mathematical property. So Friedman colleagues were reluctant to consider it a distinctive feature of the universe. To prove that space has definite limits, researchers decided to measure its curvature. Any value other than zero would mean that the universe is limited and bound to have a particular shape. Unfortunately, our machines kept obtaining discouraging results over and over again. The universe turned out to have zero curvature with up to 90% accuracy. This is a equivalent to endlessly flat space. So why is this dangerous? Considering that right now the universe is already expanding with acceleration, its boundlessness may mean an eventual infinite speed increase, and then even the original Hubble constant will seem meager. Sooner or later, space will start expanding so fast that our galaxy will lose contact with all other astronomical objects first, and then begin to break apart a bit later. The solar system would soon follow suit and disappear disintegrate. In the end, the limitless universe will be expanding so quickly that even atomic bonds won't be able to endure it, and all humans and everything else will get torn into ever tinier bits. The universe will turn into something like a very watery soup composed of the absolute smallest particles. Scientists call this doomsday scenario the Big Rip Model. So when should we expect this to happen? Marcello Disconzi, the author of The Hypothesis, has predicted that the Earth will be destroyed in something like 22 billion years. That's quite enough time for us, of course. But what about our descendants living their happy lives in distant star systems? This apocalypse would find and strike them wherever they are. However, in recent years, there have been more and more reasons to question the Big Rip and even the idea of an infinite universe. The Planck spacecraft has completed a super detailed all-sky map of the cosmic microwave background, helping scientists clarify information about the universe's spatial curvature. At first glance, this new data only disappoints, as this time the universe again appeared to be flat, with a 0.4% margin of error replacing the previous 10%. But astronomers tried to look at this parameter from a different angle. What if the curvature of space-time fits into this margin of error. Even though this makes the universe finite, it'd still be way, way larger, almost than we could imagine, even using our most extravagant hypotheses. Currently, the observable universe is around 93 billion light-years in diameter. The data collected by Planck suggests that a universe whose curvature is so insignificant is at least 250 times larger than the observable observable one. Sounds unbelievable, until you remember that it took people of the past a long time to realize that Earth was a sphere. From the perspective of someone standing on the planet's surface, its curvature is invisible. 
we needed a lot of special measurements to debunk the flat earth theory. And even after that, there's still a lot of believers in this myth. According to Planck, the curvature of the universe is immeasurably less than that of the earth. But if so, it must have a specific final form. Depending on this shape, we have a few different scenarios of the future, each one worse than the other. The shape of the universe could be life-threatening in the literal sense of the word. To find out what that shape is, we need to know both the curvature and density of outer space. But that ain't so easy. We know that it mainly consists of not regular matter and energy, but rather dark matter and dark energy. How densely and evenly it's distributed is a big question that modern science has yet to answer. Imagine a piece of cloth being pulled in different directions with unequal force. Quite soon, it'll be all wrinkled. The same thing may be happening to our universe depending on its density. One way or another, it gets creased as well. If this curvature is positive and fits within Planck's measurement error, then our universe might well be a giant hypersphere. You may think of it as kind of like our planet, only much bigger. But in truth, a hypersphere isn't three-dimensional like Earth, it's four-dimensional. That's like the difference between a circle drawn on a piece of paper and a sphere. Only here, everything is at a higher level, where an additional dimension is involved. It may be a bit too hard for our 3D brains to grasp the idea immediately. So let's just go with a sphere. In 2019, cosmologist Alessandro Melchiori from the Sapienza University of Rome studied the concept of a hyperspherical universe. If it really has this shape, the catastrophic Big Rip is much less likely to happen. But don't get too excited just yet. Do you remember the omnipresent dark matter and dark energy? Scientists believe that right after the Big Bang, these substances spawned cosmic inflation, a period of extremely fast expansion that continues to speed up exponentially even right now. This inflation smoothed out space so much that to this day, we can't measure its curvature. However, some astronomers doubt that dark matter will always only make the universe expand. In 2017, Chinese astronomer Gangbo Zhao, together with his team, released an article where he proved that dark matter could change its properties over time. It could be compared to a bottle of Coke left in the freezer for a very long time. At first, when cooled down, the water in the bottle contracts but as soon as ice forms, it expands with explosive power. Gongbo Zhao thinks that a similar thing may be happening to our universe. As time passes, dark matter may become so discharged that it'll stop driving the expansion of space and start compressing it instead. Scientists call this hypothetical scenario the Big Crunch. As if someone pressed rewind, all celestial objects will shrink back into one single dot. But long before this, gravity will become so strong that stars in our galaxy will collide and humans will get slammed into the surface of the Earth. And who knows, maybe the Big Crunch will come together with a new Big Bang that'll sweep us all away once and for all. But wait, hold on a second. Measurements of the curvature made by Planck are correct within a 0.4% margin of error. But it could be not just positive, but also negative within the same limits. In this case, the observable universe would be shaped like a saddle. But unlike a hypersphere, it's only a part of a finite 4D figure. So what does the full picture look like? American author Howard Bloom once came up with a humorous theory that the universe may be shaped like a donut. Could you imagine his surprise when he got scientific confirmation? Jana Levin, a theoretical cosmologist from the University of Cambridge suggest that the universe might also be a torus, and galaxies inside it may be moving around just like in an old video game. You know, when a player-controlled starship disappears from the screen on one side, 
and immediately re-emerges from the other. Jan 11 thinks that inside the donut-shaped universe, our galaxies not only scatter around, but move in a certain direction according to the same principle. This means that the reason why we can't find the limits of space is extremely simple, because it's a loop. Depending on the characteristics of dark matter, the donut may survive both the big rip or the big crunch. However, there is an extra problem. When moving along a negatively curved figure, our galaxy may end up at one of its extreme points. Consequently, it may not only tear the fabric of space around us, but also interfere with the flow of time. In a distorted world like this, your entire life might endure for only a few minutes. Although such extreme curvature is improbable, researchers have already found evidence that some uncontrollable force is carrying galaxies into a space whirlpool. The mystery of this so-called dark flow has been haunting scientists for quite some time. In 2008, a team of specialists from NASA, led by astrophysicist Alexander Keshlinsky, detected around 800 distant galaxy clusters hurtling in the same direction at 1,000 kilometers per second, as if something's hoovering them up like a mega-galactic vacuum cleaner. Unfortunately, the point these galaxies are moving towards lies far beyond the edge of the observable universe. Today, astronomers call this phenomenon the dark flow. Little by little, it spreads here and there and the number of affected celestial objects is growing. According to recent data, it may have increased so far up to 1,400 clusters. Laura Mersini houghton a theoretical physicist from the University of North Carolina, suggests that whatever triggered the dark flow is also the main main cause of the spatial curvature. It looks like this unknown, powerful force is pulling the entire universe and makes it take one of the theorized positively or negatively curved shapes. If this is true, the variety of forms is much larger than just a hypersphere or a donut. How would you like our universe as a 4D Mobius strip or a Klein bottle? The configuration could be so outlandish that if our galaxy follows the dark flow, it may enter into a region of space where all material objects will start curving and stretching like spaghetti. Moreover, this effect would be a thousand times stronger than if we were pulled inside a wormhole or black hole. But what if the source of the dark flow isn't the narrow bottleneck of our universe? Universe, but a real portal. Some of the theories dedicated to the nature of the dark flow state that it might be taking us to a gateway to another universe. And that's exactly why galaxies experience this mysterious pull. But the most intriguing part is that there might be more than just one dark flow in existence, meaning that our universe might share borders with lots of other universes, and all of them might be directly touching each other. Astrophysicist Jean-Pierre Luminet believes that these other domains are parallel universes. He put forward a multiverse theory, saying that the universe could replicate itself an infinite number of times in the same common space, just like mirrors placed in front of each other produce countless reflections. The scientist thinks that space is a kind of football with 12 pentagonal parts located symmetrically. In theory, we could see the same objects in different areas of space. But if other universes lie dozens or even hundreds of billions of light years away, even the most advanced telescopes won't be able to spot these faint reflections, at least for now. So why is it a bad idea to migrate with the dark flow to a neighboring parallel universe? Here on Earth, where oceans meet, you can find special places looking something like this. Bodies of water and their currents run into each other and mix, which often causes sudden shipwrecks. But if transition zones can be so vicious even on a planetary scale, what is waiting for us if we travel between universes? According to the multiverse theory, some worlds may differ from ours not only in shape, 
but in their physical laws as well. Getting sucked into this interstellar transition zone may lead to an unprecedented disaster. If another universe's gravity is only 10% stronger, the Earth would instantly spiral into the Sun. And if electrons there carry a slightly greater charge, carbon bonds won't be possible, so every living being will simply disintegrate into ion clouds. At this rate, humanity needs a stroke of astronomical luck. We can only hope that the conditions on the other side are not so unbearable. Regardless of the finite universe's shape and size in three-dimensional space, it could still be limitless in the fourth dimension, time. And this brings us to the most ruthless cosmic apocalypse. It's called the Big Freeze. Physicist Michio Kaku is sure that in the case where the universe keeps expanding and expanding, it eventually won't be able to sustain life any longer. One day, trillions of years from now, all stars will fade away and even black holes would disappear. Outer space would become an almost total vacuum with only individual particles occasionally floating through its gloomy depths. So I'm wondering, in your opinion, what ultimate fate awaits the universe at the end of its journey?